Have you ever wondered how available your Azure SQL database is? Well, you can now do it from the Azure portal. Learn all about it this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Rajesh, a Principal PM Manager on the Azure SQL Database team. Thanks so much for joining us Thanks, again. Thanks, Anna. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Always a pleasure to have you. And today, we're going to be talking about something I don't know anything about. It's called an availability metric. So I'd love right. to kick off, like, what is this, and why do customers want it? Sure. Thanks, Anna. Thanks for uh, the intro. So in, in the SQL DB, what we always wanted and what customers have always asked us for an ability to monitor availability for SQL database. And this has been uh, a fundamental ask from many customers. And they also had a bunch of requirements, as in they wanted to monitor the availability at a granular level, be uh, it all the way down to what is possible. Uh, they wanted it in a consistent way, uh, meaning they wanted to integrate with Azure Monitor, which is a single pane of glass for all the monitoring solutions right. in Azure. Right? Uh, and obviously, they wanted it in near, uh, near real time. Uh, if something happens, if the DB is unavailable, they wanted to know it sooner than later. And most importantly, they wanted a high quality data. Uh, they wanted us to make sure that hey, any metric data that you publish for a resource uh, should be emitted right from the engine, wherein we exactly know what's happening on the uh, DB engine. Right? Totally. And I could see how like for really big customers or for really important yeah. workloads, you'd want to know. Exactly. You'd want to be able to just go look and say, yeah. like, oh, this was my availability. Exactly. And observability is a key factor where many customers are pivoting around, and they wanted transparency into what is going on into the resource. Right? Sure. And here's our answer. So we have exposed availability metric in Portal. Uh, and it tracks, uh, as I was talking about uh, what it meets in terms of requirements, uh, it tracks availability of individual database at a one million granularity. And it's applicable for both singleton and elastic pool. So irrespective of whether the database is a singleton DB or part of an elastic pool, you still get the availability metric. And hyperscale? And hyperscale too, oh, cool. and across all the service oh, tiers. Great. So it's applicable for hyperscale, general purpose, business critical, and even all the service tiers in the DTM model. Right. And this is an Azure monitor metric, uh, meaning right off the bat, you get it, uh, see the metric in monitor, uh, which means all your existing alerts, uh, any custom uh, monitoring that you've set up in monitor just works off the nice. bat. And the most important thing for this metric is this is based on uh, the notion that. Uh, is, is the database available for connections, and it is based on SLA compliance, which is the most critical thing, uh, because customers have long asked us, hey, you have a 49s SLA, but is there a way to monitor the availability uh, that's pertaining and that's subjected to and fully compliant with SLA definition? And that's exactly what we have done. A minute is considered as downtime if all continuous attempts to the database fail uh, to a system issue, uh, as in the issue is on the SQL DB service side. Uh, and this is fully compliant with the SLA definition. And typically, the latency for the data to show up in this metric is less than a couple of minutes. Two to three minutes is what we see, uh, which is pretty much what customers have been asking us for. Cool. And let's quickly get into the logic that's used for computing availability. Uh, so the possible values for the availability metric are either 0 or 100%. And it is 100% if there is a successful connection, as you would normally expect or if all connections are failing due to user errors. And we'll talk about what is a user error uh, and a system error uh, in the next slide. And availability is also 100% if there are no connection items, meaning if the DB is idle and no one is connecting to it, DB is okay. 100%. That's what I was going to ask. How do you know if no one's connecting? Exactly. Okay, got it. Uh, and that's a provision that the SLA provides. Uh, pretty much the entire uh, cloud database management service uh, providers have converged onto this definition, and we just follow the standard. Makes sense. And the availability is zero if all connections in that minute fail due to system errors, meaning there is an issue going on on the Azure SQL, SQL DB service side, right? And that's when we mark that DB as unavailable for that minute, right? Uh, let's quickly go through uh, what are user errors and system errors. And this comes a lot uh, because customers definitely want to understand the distinction between these two. Uh, user errors are all the errors uh, that fail due to uh, user configuration. Let's say if someone has set up a bad firewall, uh, have run, opened up firewall, and they're trying to connect, they would get a connection failure. Uh, nothing bad happening on the service side, just that the configuration on the right. user side has failed. right? Or maybe someone is connecting with an invalid credentials. right? Even in that case, those are uh, categorized as user errors. Uh, there could also be workload uh, related. Let's say you have configured a SQL DB to be a 2B core or a 4B core, and you have pretty much exhausted all the resources. Right. Right? Uh, in the past world, every database comes with its own resource governance, meaning if you exhaust, uh, then it's pretty much a workload-driven, nothing bad on the platform side. 
right? Or it could also be possible where you are doing some management operations as in scaling up or down mm -hmm. or doing a failovers and you're trying to connect. Uh, and if it connection, if connections mm -hmm. fail, uh, all errors, uh, all connectivity errors during that period of time are considered as user errors. Right, makes rightfully sense. Rightfully so, yeah. right? Uh, now, what are system errors? So system errors are all those transient errors, uh, which is that famous uh, 40613. Uh, let's say if there's a reconfiguration going on behind the scenes, and we take more than 60, min 60 seconds, so that's when uh, you'd see that downtime as one minute, and then it'll start popping up as a downtime minute uh, in the uh, availability metric. Right. And we also put a link, I'll share this in the show notes, so wherein we customers can see uh, what are the user errors and system errors that we have already documented. Okay, so I can see all the errors yes. and be like, oh, that's a system error, or oh, that's me, I should yeah, <laughs> fix exactly. my firewall. <laughs> yeah. uh, and if you want to see this metric in the portal, uh, as you rightly called, up, uh, called upon, is it available for hyperscale or what other service tiers? It's available for all service tiers. So pretty much if you go into the portal and uh, select the database, add this metric, uh, which is availability, you will see the SLA compliant availability met, uh, data for that database. Right? Uh, we are very excited uh, to have this data out, and then we hope you leverage this and then uh, benefit from monitoring. Cool, awesome. I mean, this seems pretty exciting. I'm sure most customers would want to go see this. So all they have to do is go in and set it up and they can start seeing it? Exactly. If you have a SQL DB resource, all, it should already be showing up to, on your resource. So look up for the metric, uh, be it in portal or a programmatic way, and you should see the availability metric right in the portal. Cool, awesome. Well, thanks for just so much. I learned a lot. I'm going to go check out the availability metric in the Azure portal. And for folks tuning in, if you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment, and let us know what you think. And we'll put some links in the description for you to learn more. We hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. <laughs>